This is the Acer Aspire Transformer Book TP200. We've had the Celeron version of this with 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage in for test over at our USA offices. And uh, we're going to give you some details on that right now. But first of all, let's go over the device and tell you a bit more about what it is. And uh, we'll go into some performance results later in this video. So the TP200 is basically a low cost two in one. It's a single unit device. So it's got that 360 degree, degree flip screen. It weighs 1.2 kilos. And there's an 11.6 inch screen. It's glossy, it's IPS, but it's 1366 by 768. And some of the brightness levels aren't very good on, uh, as you'll see in the performance results later in the video. Price in the USA for this is a reasonable $350 dollars or sub 350 dollars in europe the euro price is a little bit higher and that is only for the 2 gig 32 gig storage version so if you're in europe be careful about pricing uh, take a closer look before you buy about what specifications you're buying there's a look at the ports there's a a power port there which is a uh, it isn't a usb port uh, it's a proprietary power port volume power we have a micro SD port, we have micro HDMI, USB 3 slot, and a USB C port there with USB 2 connectivity behind it. On the other side, we've got the headset port and another full side USB 2 port. There's a look at the uh, ports. There's an interesting selection of ports on the TP200. Let's start off with this uh, PowerPoint. It, is, uh, it isn't a standard USB type power connector, proprietary volume up and down power and then you get onto the micro uh, SD card slot micro HDMI USB 3 here and a USB C with USB 3.1 behind it the old USB 3.0 standard so you're getting some good connectivity options there note that charging is not through the USB C port it's through the separate USB port there's AC Wi-Fi support in this as well so that's quite unique amongst some of these uh, low-cost two-in-ones you're also getting a 5 megapixel rear facing camera and a 2 megapixel front facing camera. There's a look at the back of the device. There are a number of removable screws, um, but there's quite a few, and they're all also hidden screws underneath the uh, feet as well. So it's quite a job to get the back open. And as this has got the MCC, EMMC uh, storage inside, probably not upgradable. Although that RAM module might be upgradable, we haven't had a look inside the TP1, TP200, so we can't tell you for sure whether that's upgradable or not. Chiclet style keyboard is quite nice actually. There's a 1.6 millimeter uh, key travel on that, which is, gives it a good uh, feel. A little bit of flex in the middle, but the uh, overall the experience is good. No backlight on the keyboard though. The touchpad is reasonable and nice and smooth. There's a positive click on the mouse buttons and even some multi-touch gestures including a three finger gesture to bring up the Cortana digital assistant on Windows 10. Let's talk a little bit more about that touch screen. It's 10 finger touch. Uh, there's no pen support on there. But let's just take a look at that brightness because the sense of brightness on this is only 262.1 which is quite uh, poor really. It's under 300 is really not, uh, not what we'd expect in 2000. 15, 248 at the edges, so really quite a low brightness uh, screen. Black levels uh, reasonable though, so you get a reasonable contrast ratio on this, 8 8.871. Um, color accuracy is actually quite good, 3.24 on color, 2.34 on the gray scales, so that's a nice color accuracy. The color space is not huge, 40.6% 40 of Adobe RGB. So if you're going to use this indoors, that brightness is probably not going to be a problem, and the colors will be nice for watching a film, certainly in sort of airplane situations where low ambient light is around. On the performance scores, the Cinebench R15 scores you're looking at here, what you're seeing is largely the difference between dual core and quad core variants of the, the old Baytrail M and the Braswell platform. Um, now the Asus Transformer Book Flip TP200 SA we have here is a dual core variant and if you look down at the ThinkPad Yoga 11E and the Yoga 311, well the Yoga 11E is a quad core uh, Braz uh, Baytrail M, the Yoga, Yoga 311 is a core M CPU so that gives you a little bit of a comparison 
on the multiple CPU scores, but go to a single CPU score and you'll see that all of the previous and current generations on the Atom architecture are much, much the same. And there's the Core M architecture there on the Lenovo Yoga 311 showing the per core performance increase there of uh, about 70% over the TP200. PC Mart score, well, a lot of this is down to the um, to the EMC, EMMC SSD, which has pushed up the scores quite nicely. 2494 points there, which is low end office, uh, entry level office, you know, sort of um, low end student perhaps, and a little bit of uh, entertainment video playback type uh, result from that. Um, looking at the Crystal Mark uh, score, then, uh, if you look at the read, performance 100 and nearly 160 megabytes per second on the read 67 on the right and on the right 4k score there 10.24 megabytes per second which isn't bad at all it's one of the better emmc scores we've seen recently in terms of graphics the soc has the integrated hd graphics with 12 execution units uh, 600 megahertz uh, clock speed maximum clock speed so this is um, HD graphics, uh, slightly reduced from what you might see in, a, in an Ultrabook platform or something similar. So 3D Mark performance down at 437 there, that's 3D Mark 11. And if you look at uh, one of the games we tested there, NO2070, you just scrape by with low settings. Um, World of Warcraft, yes, you might also just about scrape by with uh, low settings as well. Note that there's a video encoder and a video decoding hardware in here as well. So it can help with conversions of videos, for example, from uh, full HD to maybe a smaller uh, resolution or bitrate uh, for mobile use. And uh, the decoding will give you video playback rates very uh, high, up to well over 100 megabits per second of total H264 throughput. The tablet is fanless, so totally silent and it stays quite cool under load maximum 41.4 on the top left it's really not too bad the rest of the device staying nice and cool speakers are located underneath on the bottom maximum volume is okay and the sound quality is actually better than expected so there's even a little bit of bass there as well so not bad for the TP200 on the speakers battery life and then we'll give you the pros and cons and the final score Idle, well, this is a very efficient idling platform. 17 hours and 35 minutes is uh, nothing to be surprised at. It's good, and it really shows you that this is an ultra mobile on the go device. Wi Fi surfing them, 8 hours 43 minutes, and that is uh, a pretty reasonable score for this uh, device. 38 watt hour uh, battery inside, so um, that's not too, too bad for that size battery. Under load, you'll get about four and a half hours out of that. That's with maximum brightness. And uh, even under load, there won't be uh, too much gaming or, or processing being done anyway because of the fairly low relative performance of this uh, platform. So a rundown of the pros and cons. The IPS display is quite good. It's a very light device and there's a good battery life. Ergonomics are good. Uh, that keyboard wasn't too bad. And the speakers are pretty good as well. And there's a good advantage with that USB 3.1 Gen 1, that's the uh, USB 3.0 standard type C port. On the hinge, we felt that wasn't quite uh, strong enough or maybe sturdy enough. And uh, we also note that only micro SD XC cards are supported at the moment. Performance, well, just about adequate, but okay for this class of device. We had a couple of difficulties running, a couple of the benchmark tests. You'll see details in the full review. And we also note that the lower edge of the touchpad caught occasionally as we were using it. In the convertible class of laptops, this is actually not too bad as an entry level uh, device, especially considering the price in the USA. We gave it a score of 82%, but don't expect this to be a very high performing device. This is um, a home use device in multiple uses scenarios, coffee table, uh, sofa side, and uh, with that AC Wi-Fi, you should be getting some really nice uh, performance over uh, browsing as well. Good battery life, and of course, it's silent and cool. So that's the Asus Transformer Book Flip TP200SA full review on notebookcheck.net and notebookcheck.com in German. Uh, don't forget to check that out for more details. Do note that the price in Europe is quite a lot different to what you're seeing in what we're seeing in the USA right now. 
So if you're looking in, in the Europe, do check these specifications before you hit that buy button. Thanks for watching this. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you got something out of the video. And we hope to see you again soon on another Notebook Check Tech Review.